Welcome to Beat Diabetes. Today we're going to talk about a couple of the major approaches to doing just that, to beating diabetes. When you are first diagnosed with diabetes, a lot of times the doctor will prescribe you some meds or maybe even tell you to take insulin and send you home. And that's not enough for a lot of people. They, they want to know more. They want to know, is there a possibility I can reverse this? I can beat this? So typically they do one of two things. They either get on YouTube and just start watching various videos by different ones to see what people have to say about it. Or they order a book or two or three or four about diabetes. And the idea is, is there an approach? Is there a way, a method, a strategy to beating this thing? And generally when you do that, if you're very thorough, you'll get a little confused because there are two major approaches that seem like they're almost exactly opposite of one another. Now, the other approach, of course, is just take your meds and try to hope for the best. But a lot of people are not satisfied with that, and I expect that you probably are not satisfied with that either if you're watching this video because uh, that doesn't really give you much hope. So, the two different approaches you will run into, whether you watch YouTube videos or read books, are the whole, the whole food, plant-based approach, or the low-carb approach that uh, doesn't mind meat at all and doesn't get scared of saturated fat. And they're almost opposite. You, you think, well, they can't both be right. So, we're going to talk about these two approaches and talk about... Uh, several authors, uh, myself included, and, and uh, how they are represented in these approaches. Now, here's the interesting thing. And let me, well, let me just first go ahead and share uh, the authors. One is Dr. Neil Bernard. He has written a book called Reversing Diabetes. He's a fairly popular uh, doctor. Uh, he's actually a psychiatrist, but uh, fairly popular in the idea of reversing diabetes, another one is Joel Furman, Dr. Joel Furman. He, he wrote The End of Diabetes. The third one is Dr. Jason Fung, who takes almost the exact opposite approach. And he has written The Diabetes Code, very popular book. And then there's me, Dennis Pollack. No, I'm not a doctor. I'm a non-doctor. But I wrote a book called 60 Ways to Lower Your Blood Sugar. Should be available on Amazon, although I'm not sure they're printing it anymore. So we're going to talk about these two different approaches and these four different authors. But the first thing we need to say is if you go to the review section on these books, and that's something I always love to do is check out the reviews, whether I'm buying some little $10 phone case or I'm making a major purchase. Uh, I like to read the reviews on Amazon of what people are saying about it. And uh, so if you go to the reviews on all these different authors, you find there are positive reviews on every one of them. Dr. Bernard, lots of people saying lots of nice things about the book and about him and how he has helped them. Dr. Joel Furman, same thing. Dr. Jason Fung, same thing. Dr. <laughs> Non-doctor, <laughs> preacher Dennis Pollack, same thing. Uh, they all, all these approaches and all these authors have lots of people. I mean, we're in the probably 90% plus range for all of them. They say very nice things and say, the book has helped me, the, I've reversed my diabetes, or I, I think it's a great book, and so forth and so on. So let's start out with the most radical of all, in my opinion, and that would be Dr. Neil Bernard. Uh, here is one of the reviews you'll find on Amazon, or at least I found, uh, about this book, Reversing Diabetes. First of all, let me say it has a 4.4 rating, that is out of a possible 5.0 for perfect, the rating is 4.4 positives. Uh, so anyway, I was shocked, this person says, when I first discovered I had prediabetes, a thin, healthy guy like myself. But after the initial shock, I knew I needed to educate myself and fast. And uh, I was a vegetarian already as well as a healthcare professional. I was a little ahead knowledge-wise, but I needed some specific guidance. I did some quick checking and ordered Dr. Bernard's book right away. So eager to find some info about diabetes. The amazing thing was just how quickly my own experience confirmed what he says in the book. So he says, my experience confirmed exactly what he was saying. Within just a few days by eliminating sugar, 
Balancing my grains and beans and eating smaller portions, I was able to get my sugars under control, and I have maintained them now for several weeks. So apparently he has not been long in this struggle, but he says, I'm doing a whole lot better following Dr. Neil Bernard. All right, Dr. Joel Furman wrote the book, The End of Diabetes. Uh, Also, this book has a 4.4 rating out of five, so mostly positive. And here's an individual who left a review under his book. I hardly ever write reviews, but I feel compelled to share my wife Robin's experience after five weeks on Dr. Furman's diet. At 190 pounds and five feet eight, she was about 50 pounds overweight. She had been on glipizide for diabetes and a couple of other meds for blood pressure. Her last A1C was 9.5, very high, well in the danger zone for diabetics. Most of her fasting blood glucose readings were above 200, not at all a good situation for her. After the initial five weeks, she is off all those medications. That's pretty impressive, five weeks. Joel Furman's diet, off all five medications. Uh, Her fasting blood pressure reading was 117 over 78, amazing. Her fasting glucose hovers around 90 to 100, outstanding. She's already lost 15 pounds as well. Tonight, we decided to have a cheat meal, and they talk about how they ate salmon and two uh, corn on the cobs, a full a cup of northern beans with onions and garlic, nearly 100 carbs to the meal, 100 grams of carbs. Should have sent her blood glucose soaring, but two hours after this meal, her blood glucose was 97. We didn't believe that was possible. We measured it a second time. It was 94, so at the two-hour mark after eating, um, outstanding results, and they're very happy with Dr. Joel Furman and his program. And uh, so anyway, uh, lots of reviews like that with a 4.4 rating. Uh, They did pretty well. Now let's go on to our third book by Dr. Jason Fung called The Diabetes Code. This one has a 4.7 rating. So the highest rating of the four, including myself, (laughs) <laughs> he, uh, this person left a review and said, I struggled for nearly nine years with type 2 diabetes. I tried to follow the advice the doctors gave me, eat better, exercise more, etc. I did get healthier and lose weight, but I kept hitting a wall. I managed to stay in range, but I couldn't keep my weight below a certain point. Even with my weight somewhat stable, my A1C would creep up, slowly getting worse, and more meds were added. I nearly accepted that whatever it takes to be type 2 diabetes, I just didn't have it in me. This was a moral failure but at best, but I tried to minimize and slow down the inevitable. Then he says, I found Dr. Fung's book. I said, let's give it a go. It started January 1 of 2019. Figured I could follow this advice until my next doctor visit and see if it works. The first month I lost 18 pounds. I don't weigh myself often, but I was down 26 pounds in mid-March. Since the beginning, I've dropped from a size 40 uh, pants to size 36. My blood work came back this weekend. My A1C had dropped from 7.2 in November to 4.9. The lowest I've ever managed in nine years was 6.3. So now he's at 4.9. Outstanding. Sometimes I have been in the eight plus range. So saw excellent results from Dr. Jason Fung and his advice. And, uh, And then there's me with my book, 60 Ways to Lower the Blood Sugar. It has a 4.6 rating. I was kind of flattered that uh, my blood sugar had a higher rating by the readers than uh, Dr. Neil Bernard and uh, Dr. Joel Furman, uh, being a little old preacher from Texas. Anyway, this individual says, I give this book to anyone who has diabetes. I used it while I was a nurse. It is factually easy to read, easy to understand, helps one to assume responsibility for their health and well-being. This is probably my seventh copy. I think this book is a life changer. And then here's another one. I was tired of being a type 2 diabetic. I found this guy on YouTube. (laughs) His everyday life experiences with high blood sugar saved me from doing as much testing. Really down-to-earth guy. If you want to reverse your type 2 diabetes, give this guy a look on YouTube. This book helped me go from an A1C of 7.3 to 5.9 in five months. So uh, great results. But when you read these kind of things and you're seeing, okay, Dr. Furman has great results and has a lot of people saying nice things about him and Dr. Neil Bernard seems to be having great results and a lot of people say nice things about him. Same thing with Dr. Jason Funk, same thing with uh, thing with non-Dr. Dennis Pollack. Uh, What's going on? How can these both be right? Uh, And uh, so I wanted to talk about that a little bit. Um, The first thing I want to say is that for, for, for these guys other than me, 
one factor that can play into all of this, all the positive results is a lot of times people will buy books about somebody they already know and like. So if you know and like Dr. Neil Bernard from maybe watching him on YouTube or reading a previous book and you say, well, I like Dr. Bernard. He makes sense. And you buy another book. Well, chances are you're going to be very positive. And the same thing with Joel Furman. Uh, same thing with Jason Fung. If you've watched them on YouTube or if you've read previous books and uh, you are already a fan, then, of course, you're very likely to appreciate their last and latest book. Now, with me in the 60 Ways book, very few pe people knew me. I was not any kind of a big celebrity. Still, I'm not, but I w was even less so back in those days when that first came out. So they didn't buy the book because they said, oh, boy, Dennis Pollack has written a great uh, a book. I love him. I wasn't even on YouTube when that came out, as I recall. Uh, but they were buying it because of the title, mostly, and also by, because they opened the book and read a couple chapters and, looked, and it looked interesting. Uh, 60 Ways to Overcome Your Blood Sugar. They liked the title, maybe looked at a quick uh, chapter or two and, and bought it. So anyway, in many cases, one of the reasons you get good reviews on books is they already have decided they like the author. But there are some other issues we want to talk about. Uh, but uh, the, the main heart of this little video that I'm creating today is how can both approaches help people? Because if you look at the, the positive reviews, and every one of those books has positive reviews, lots of them, lots of them. You say, well, how in the world can that be? So let me give you a few thoughts about it. Uh, first of all, any diet by definition or any new way of eating, you, you don't want to call it a diet fine because really diet in many mind, people's minds means you do it for six months and then you stop. But any new way of eating is going to limit your choices because the standard diet means you eat whatever you like. You want this, you want that. Everything's on the table. Everything's fair game. Everything is good. Uh, I'll just eat what I like. So anytime you adopt a new diet, a new approach to eating, a new dietary lifestyle, you're going to limit what you eat as compared to how you used to eat. And that usually means you're going to lose weight. It doesn't hardly matter. And I know the theory is that low carb helps you to lose weight and high carb, you don't lose weight. But the reality is if you go vegan, there's going to be a whole lot of foods you cannot eat now that you used to could. And Dr. Neil Bernard, for all practical purposes, is a vegan. Dr. Joel Furman is almost a vegan. And Dr. Jason Fong and me, your lowly preacher, uh, are not anywhere close to being vegan. But any diet you approach, you're going to... Uh, limit your food choices, you're going to limit the way you eat. And initially, probably for a year or more, for most people, you're going to lose weight. And so that's going to affect a lot of things. And typically, if you lose weight, in many cases, your numbers, your glucose numbers are going to get better. So in many cases, it's the weight, baby, more than anything else. It's the weight. Now, I think that's true for keto as well. I, there are other issues that, that make keto a superior choice uh, for diabetics. But the weight is no small thing. It's, if you're overweight, now, if you're slim, then it's not the weight. You don't have, you're not carrying any weight. But if you're overweight and you can lose some weight, I don't care if you go on a pickle diet or any kind of a diet. If you eat little enough, and your choices are limited enough, you're going to lose weight and you're going to do better and your numbers are going to reflect that, your A1C, your fasting glu glucose, and so forth. The second point, the standard American diet, standard British diet, standard any diet is so awful, is so bad. Eating all you want, lots of fats, lots of carbs, lots of sugars, lots of everything. Just whatever you like, whenever you like. That's the standard diet. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Gobble it all down. It is so bad, it is so unnatural, it is so unhealthy, it is so poisonous that any time you move off of the standard diet onto almost any other diet, you will improve. So the whole foods, plant-based approach is superior, vastly superior to the standard diet. One example is they don't allow sugar and neither do us low carbers. We don't we don't allow sugar. They don't allow sugar. Practically any of the diets that you want to go to, 
are all going to say, leave the sugar behind. That by itself should help your numbers significantly. Americans have a love affair with sugar and sugary products and sugary treats. And we put sugar in our ketchup and we put sugar in our yogurt. We put it in everything. Add a little sugar. So you go on any diet at all, practically, Dr. Bernard's, Dr. Furman's, Dr. Young, uh, Fung's, and my, my own approach, and they all tell you stop eating sugar. And that's going to help a great deal. They also tell you stop eating processed foods. They don't like processed foods. The whole food, that's why they call it whole foods. They don't call it processed foods diet. They call it whole foods diet. Eat natural foods, not processed foods. And that's going to help you. So, yeah, absolutely, they will help. Sugar is condemned by both approaches and by nearly every uh, dietary recommendation, uh, recommendation you can think of. And then also, they both tend to, to promote low glycemic foods. Now, those of us in the low-carb camp, we go beyond that. We say not just low glycemic, low-carb, period. Quit worrying so much about the glycemic thing and just cut the carbs so low, they can't be glycemic very much. Whereas the others say, well, eat plenty of carbs, but eat the low glycemic carbs. But they, they both talk about that. Everybody talks about that. So if you go even to Dr. Bernard's, which is the most radical of all, his diet, you will still likely improve significantly over the standard diet. And some of those reviews are going to reflect that. They're going to say, well, he helped me. I don't doubt that. He will help you. If you're moving from standard to his, you should improve. Something would be strange if you did not improve. I think you can improve vastly more, <laughs> much more with a low-carb approach, but you'll improve for sure. And you'll probably lose weight. My daughter Joy has recently started a YouTube channel, and one of her early programs was an interview of yours truly. Joy wanted me to share how I transformed from full-time preaching to devoting so much of my time and energy to beating diabetes. Now, I've shared some of the details of this on Beat Diabetes, but there are some other things you'll probably never hear if you don't see this two-part interview on Joy's channel. I'll leave a link to Joy's YouTube channel in the description that will take you to those videos where she interviewed me. And you just might want to watch some of her own videos and subscribe to her channel. In a short time, she's becoming a great YouTuber, if I do say so myself.